in terms of how I get this, this performance, um, some of it's just playing with settings. I've gone in and I've played with various settings in the um, uh, in the options uh, scenery uh, settings, and I've turned certain things down a little bit to see what had the biggest performance impact. So I've I've toyed with it over the years. I've tried various settings. Um, if you turn off dynamic lighting, that usually will get you a whole bunch of frames back, uh, or uh, even uh, 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 HDR mode. If you turn HDR mode, that'll get you a few frames back. Um, one thing you can do as well is you can ch try playing with your processor affinity. Uh, this was a trick that uh, somebody showed me, and it actually does work to a certain degree. Um, so if you have your task manager up in uh, up on your computer, um, Depending on how many cores you have in your computer, I'm running an eight-core processor. Um, if you've got anything much more than, if usually if you've got anything even four cores, uh, you can kind of optimize your processor affinity. And what processor affinity means is when this particular process is running, when this particular program is running, which of those cores does it use, or which of those cores does it favor? And normally, when you start software like Prepared. Uh, and a lot of software, it will have a certain core it wants to use. Sometimes the s operating system will tell it to use certain cores. Some software will, by default, try to always use a certain core. And what I found is that P3D, by default, tries to use the first core. Uh, so what you can do is if you're in your process manager here, and you open this up, you click, right-click on your process that you're interested in, and you say, go to details. And it'll take you over here to the details tab with the current process highlighted. And if you go in there and you hit set affinity, and a processor affinity is, again, it's picking which of your processor cores um, your software is using. And what I found, uh, first of all, is that when you first start up P3D, it tends to only want to use CPU zero. Even though you kind of may have all the rest of them enabled, it only ever wants to use CPU zero. Uh, so what I found was that if I took off um, CPU zero, so it, it would start out like this, with all processors highlighted. What I found is if you would take off CPU 0, hit OK, and then come back in and turn on CPU 0, that would, by turning off CPU 0 for a period of time, it would immediately force the distribution of the load on all the rest of the processors, and it would share the load much more evenly across all the processors. So I found that it would do that. Um, what I've actually found is that if you take it off CPU 0 and leave it off CPU 0, because this is the first CPU, this tends to be the one that Windows defaults to to run all your other software. So all your other software often ends up running on CPU 0. So what I've found personally, at least for my system, is that if I displace P3D itself off of CPU 0, I find that usually gets me about a 10% increase in, uh, in frame rate. So if I put it back on here, and I'm not sure if it's going to work now because it's been off for a while, but let's... Uh, I've got about 20, uh, 27, 28 frames per second now running on, uh, running on that first core. If I take it off the first core and just let it run on the second through the s second through the eighth, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, there, I usually find that gains me about three to five frames per second. It's not much, but it's an it's an increase of about ten percent. Um, so I find that is it works almost uh, every time at, at bumping it up, and it's sort of it's it's a little bit anecdotal. It's not I haven't done crazy benchmarking, but uh, behind my uh, overlay, I do have a frame monitor, frame rate monitor, always running in the background, and uh, yeah. I find I get about 10% extra frames just by doing that. So that's something you can do is take your take your prepared off the first core and get it run get it to run on all the rest because I find that if it tries to run on the first core it prioritizes the first core and then it uh, and and then it tends to share that first core with a lot of other tasks which tends to bog it down. So I find move it off the first core tends to work best for me anyways on my system. So you can play with that. Uh, to see if, it, if that helps your performance at all. I've definitely found that was one of the best things I could do to increase my performance. Um, other things that you could do to uh, maximize your performance, make sure you don't have anything extra running on your computer that you don't need. Um, there's a lot of stuff that often starts up with Windows, and some of it is system services that is necessary for the computer to run. But sometimes a lot of software you'll install will just always be running in the background, ready for you to use it when you want it. So it's ready to go anytime you want it but it's not necessarily something you need to have running all the time. Uh, so, uh, case in point, things like Steam. 
or Epic Game Store. When you run, you know, when you run a game on there, it runs the Steam client as well as the game. When you shut down the game, the Steam client is usually still running there in the background, waiting for you to run your next game, using up a little bit of processor power. Not much, but those, th you know, you start add up a lot of those things that run in the background. That will definitely um, start to add to your processor usage over time. Something else you can do that will probably actually help you a lot, and I just thought of it as well. Um, when you're running flight simulators. Flight simulators, uh, use a, they're using a lot of information on your computer at the same time. They will draw in information from a tons of different files. If you look at your flight simulator installation, there are literally tens, if not hundreds of thousands of uh, files installed in your P3D folder or your flight simulator folder or whatever folder you're using. There are literally tens of thousands of files and, and at any point in time, your processor will probably have thousands of them open. If you're running antivirus software on your computer, every time uh, any program tries to open a file, the antivirus software normally will scan that file quickly before that file is opened, and then as soon as it's scanned and says it's okay, then it releases it and lets the, pro the program open it. And that's okay if you're running a few things here and there, but if you're constantly opening and closing thousands of files over time, uh, the antivirus software will to make a noticeable impact in that it tries to examine every file. And some of these files, you know, may, well, a lot of them will be small and will scan in fractions of a second, but other, some of them will be big and may take a second or two to scan. And that's time that then your, your flight simulator can't, A, it can't access those files for, but B, the antivirus software is using up your processor power um, instead of letting the flight simulator have your processor power. So uh, one thing you can do as well to really improve your performance on your, uh, on whatever flight simulator platform you're on, First of all, do not install any flight simulators into the default installation directories in Windows. Don't install them into the program files directories um, because there's usually a lot higher security associated with that for a good reason, um, but it also tends to then slow down, bog down all of your processors, uh, all of your processes that are trying to open these files. So the best thing, one of the best things you can do uh, is uh, make sure you install Flight Simulator outside of the normal Windows installation paths. Um, so for me, I actually have it on a whole separate drive. Um, uh, I have it on my G drive, and then I have it in a folder called Prepared for this one, and I have a different drive that I have Microsoft Flight Simulator on, uh, and it's in its own folder. And so on top of putting these outside of the Windows directories, the other thing you can do is set up an exclusion in your antivirus software. So uh, Every antivirus software will have a different way of doing it, but there will be a way for you to uh, tell your antivirus software, do not scan any files that are opened inside of this directory. Um, so there'll be some kind of an exception, exclusion. I don't. You'll have to look it up for your antivirus software, but uh, that is also super important when you're writing flight simulators. I'm not saying don't ever scan for viruses because it is a, an important uh, it is an important function to perform. Um, but when you're dealing with flight simulators because they're opening and closing so many files all the time, you don't want that antivirus running and scanning while you're trying to s while you're trying to run your flight simulator. So what you want to do is you want to add an exclusion for your flight simulator folder um, so that it will not scan in real time as you're opening and closing these files. The better thing to do with flight simulator folders is every once schedule once a week, schedule your antivirus to automatically scan that folder once a week, but then don't have it scanned in real time as you're running. Uh, yeah, that's something I didn't know for a long time, but it absolutely makes sense, and I and I have noticed an increased performance when I when I do that. So, uh, and that goes for anything that you will your flight simulator uses too. Um, so, with the version 4.4, I think of prepared, um, you can actually mount, uh, you can actually install a lot of add-ons outside of the prepared folder. Um, so uh, let me just show you quickly an example here on my computer, if it'll come up here. So here is my um, here's my flight sim drive. So here's my prepared folder. And then I also have a second folder here called flight sim. And this is where all the add-ons that, that are happy to live outside of uh, the prepared folder go. So uh, things like... Um, uh, Pilot Life, uh, Aerosoft add-ons, uh, FS Dream Team add-ons now, uh, Active Sky, Auto for Vatsim, all this stuff here. This all lives outside of my prepared folder. So, because this is all stuff that often will be accessed when I'm running Flight Simulator as well, this is all stuff that, that it's add-ons, but it's just outside of the main folder. 
I have the exclusions in my antivirus for this folder, for the prepared folder, but also for the flight sim folder, because a lot of flight sim files are stored in here, and so I don't need those being scanned every time I'm, I'm trying to access them while I'm running Flight Simulator. So, so anywhere where you're keeping your Flight Sim software, exclude that from your normal antivirus real-time scans, and instead set up a weekly scan that once a week will scan these folders when you're not using them, when you're not flying. Set it to go in the middle of the night or whatever when you're not flying, and, uh, and scan, the, scan them that way to make sure there's no viruses uh, hiding in there, but uh, don't scan them in real time while you're trying to flight simulate because that just will that that pre penalize your performance a lot other than that i don't have any really big tips and tricks that i use uh I, i've just tweaked it i've just played with things i've i've you know turned down the auto gen settings a little bit i've i've i've, I've sat at airports and i've just watched the frame rate and i've played with different settings and i've, I've sort of found a happy medium that keeps me happy that i think has enough uh detail auto gen detail level of detail with the scenery without uh, sacrificing too much frame rate. Unfortunately, when I get closer to the bigger airports, it will drop noticeably. And uh, you probably don't notice it so much in the stream because I think the, out the uh, codec smooths the animations a little bit, but it is noticeable when it drops into the, the high teens as I approach the airports. And I'm a little disappointed with that, but I really don't want to lose too much more detail than what I've got. Uh, yeah, you could nest. You could absolutely nest all the folders together, um, and that's what I've kind of done. I, I keep my prepared folder completely separate from uh, my flight sim folder, just so I know exactly what's in each one. And the other thing is, um, if uh, you could, you could absolutely do that. You could put like, uh, you could have maybe prepared installed in your flight sim folder. Um, the only reason why I don't want to put anything else into the prepared folders, if and when I do have to uninstall and reinstall prepared, I don't want to lose all the data out of my flight sim folder as well. So that's why I kind of keep the two a little bit separate. Um, but they are somewhat organized in that way. Yeah, exactly. If you have one drive, you can put them all separate drive. I guess the other thing too, um, if you want to speed up your simulators a little bit, is to make sure you're trying to install them, if possible, on an SSD instead of a hard disk drive. Try and get a solid state drive. Uh, it definitely made a huge improvement on the load time. Um, it's still, there is some load time periodically and sometimes things won't load instantly, uh, but in general, it increases the loading speed phenomenally. Uh, I am very happy to switch to some solid, solid state drives. I did that about two years ago. Not all of my hard drives are solid state drives. I still have some old fashioned ones, but uh, the one running Windows and the ones running my flight simulators are all now solid state drives. And uh, it makes a difference in the load time of the simulator. Man, it makes a difference in the load time of Windows. Windows can reboot my computer inside of 25 seconds, I think. Um, Whereas before it was four or five minutes to reboot off the hard drive, it can read all the information and load Windows in, in 20 to 30 seconds now, which is just wonderful. Yeah, and I mean, I don't that won't necessarily affect your frame rate per se, but it definitely does affect how things get loaded. So I, uh, if you can, put your flight sims on an SSD 